All right, hi everyone. Welcome to Code Mentor Office Hours. Um, today we're very excited to have our expert mentor uh, Jose Aguinaga here with us today. Hi Jose. everybody, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Jose is a developer based in Switzerland right now, and he is going to share with us his his experiences and also answer any questions that we may have. Um, Jose, please let's get started. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Leitung. Uh Well, first of all, thank you all for 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 coming over. Um, I'll just describe really quickly what what I have in mind a little bit. First of all, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself or how I come. A, uh, I became a little bit of a developer. Uh, why I'm one to um, yeah. why I started to programming. And I mean, I will try to be really briefly, and then we'll just move on to a little bit of questions of you might uh, you might want to have, and these questions can range uh, from all sorts of. Question from all sorts of of skills levels. Like there's there's no there is no silly question, so to speak. So uh, I'll start really quickly a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a web engineer. I started working. Uh, I started programming since I was 12 years old, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, didn't did uh, just the mas basic uh, basic programs with, with my calculator, which was a Texas Instrument uh, back in the day, and also work a little bit with uh, C++, um, um, just ba making basic exercises to solve to solve my my homework, and that's how I actually started programming. When I was a little kid, I found my math my math classes really really boring, and 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 my brother came up with this book of C++ that he was doing for some college program, and that's how I actually started programming by just um, by just picking it up and then uh, started solving problems. Ever since then, I worked a little bit with web pages. Uh, I paid off my college debt, so to speak, through just programming web pages for me, uh, minor companies here and there. And after I graduated, I took uh, a job for a startup in, in Switzerland. I did a, an internship about two years ago for them. And after that, I relocated here to, to Switzerland. My current experience is around seven to eight years in, in full-time professional work development. But of course, I mean, I have done a, a little bit of here and there. I also have taught a little bit of Spanish. Uh, I was a little bit in the United States for some time and also in Canada. So I'm actually really happy of everybody that can join us here today so we can learn together a little bit more about programming and what it's all about. So. So we'll just start with uh, any questions, you guys. If you if you feel shy, you can also start with uh, uh, typing in the chat. Uh, I will try to read the, the questions as, as as soon as possible. And if you guys uh, don't have any issues, I'll just go through them really quickly. The first one that I'm going to start is uh, actually a cache which came really quickly and uh, was the early early one. So I'm just going to go really quickly uh, what I'm doing nowadays. So. What I'm doing nowadays, um, I'm currently working, uh, as I mentioned before, as a web engineer. More specifically, um, a front-end engineer. So what I work is, uh, I design, uh, I implement all the interfaces that a team of designers uh, come up with. So some visual designers, graphic designers, have this great idea that uh, you know they want to put in this web page, this, this is really cool web page. They, I don't know, they want it to fly or they want to have information. And they come to me and, and of course, the, the front-end team within the company. And what we do is we implement all this technology. The, the programming language that we use is, is called JavaScript, uh, which is probably the most widespread known languages here uh, on, on web pages. And it allows us to, to create all these really cool web applications. Um, most of the time, what we work, uh, what I do on my daily basis is coding in, in JavaScript for internal applications within the, the company. And in the future, we, we will publish a, a web application that will be released on public. And then I can point my family and my relatives and my friends, like, look, that web page that, that I made. So that's mostly what I do on, on, the, on the daily basis. So uh, that, that was a cash question. If you don't have any further questions, I can also, I can maybe you guys can type any specific question you have. I can talk a little bit about um, about learning on how do I learn uh, a little bit of programming, uh, what tools help. You, you have to give me a little bit of the feeling, otherwise I can just ask Wayton to join a little bit with some some questions that had passed and have had been asked on previous 
circumstances. Okay, so what JavaScript framework you have worked on? Oof, um, a lot. So just just to, to, to put a little bit of background, so JavaScript as, as a programming language is, has many, many multiple frameworks that allow you to, um, to speed up your programming, right? So on the same way that um, I'm trying to think of a, of a good example, on the same way that you know that you, you, you can you can you can uh, cook everything from scratch, that you you can make a recipe that I don't know you your parents have taught to to how to do from the very beginning. You can also just go with a, to the supermarket and buy prepackaged food that you just open and you just eat, right? So JavaScript frameworks are a little bit like that. They help you to pretty much boost up your productivity. And the ones that I have been working on, they were from many years ago. I'm talking about maybe prototype, MooTools, um, um, a little bit more popular jQuery. And uh, nowadays, I'm using a little bit more of Angular JS. I'm actually a really, really um, strong Angular JS developer myself. I, I write a little bit uh, of Angular JS. Um, I have been writing a little bit of articles, opinions about books, about Angular JS, and I'm trying new. I'm trying new JavaScript frameworks uh, every day. Currently, my my peers are really interested into React JS, which is a framework that um, was published by Facebook. And Angular JS in the contracts was published by Google, so I'm still trying to learn a little bit on on both areas. So uh, I'm trying to a little bit uh, learn about, about React JS. Yes. Hopefully, did I answer your question, Akash? Okay, JavaScript animation versus CSS animation. Which you prefer? Okay, uh, again, just to put up a little bit of background, animations in the web are are just a lot of fun, but they, they usually take uh, a lot of resources from your computer, right? Like maybe in 2004 when the, the whole iPhone thing revolution came, everybody was super interested to, you know, exploit uh, everything we were doing. So a lot of people started doing all these crazy things in the browser that by then JavaScript was already doing, right? CSS, which is the, the style markup of the language, which pretty much tells uh, a web page how should it look, you know, like when you go to Facebook and you have the colors here and there. Uh, CSS is this this language that tells you um, how how things should look right. So with those things in common with JavaScript and CSS, uh, animations um, can be done. And by animations, I move from something really simple, which can be from moving one uh, one specific object in one corner to the other corner. Um, you can uh, you can do really complex animations, such as video games in the browser, such as um, I don't know, sliders or galleries, right? So talking a little bit directly, I have working with both JavaScript and CSS. Preferably, I tend to go for CSS animations. I have found that they are more high performance and they are more friendly in terms of how devices and how browsers handle it. However, I think in the future when we have more powerful devices, I mean, already what we got in, in our pocket phones are, are crazy powerful. They will allow us to create even more and more powerful animations with JavaScript because JavaScript allows you to not only uh, in, not only move things here and there, but also allow you to, um, so to speak, um, interact with the user. So there's more there's more choices to do with JavaScript, but I think today uh, CSS are more performant, which is the reason why I prefer it up today. Um, last question. There, are no worries. You can you can ask. Everybody is, is is being shy at the moment, so you can keep carrying on, Akash. Um, how do you test your code in all different browsers? Um, good question. So, there is these things called web drivers, which are allowed to, so to speak, control the behavior of multiple browsers at the same time. And um, there's this, I mean, there's many, many web drivers around there. There's Selenium. There is, I think, um, a port of Protractor, which is the Protractor, yeah, which is the previous of Karma JS and to end scenario. Some links. Um, yeah. Yes. So let me just see. Selenium is one. So I'm just going to OK, so this is one, Selenium. It allows you to drive, drive like you can, you can code, um, 
you can call the um, the behavior of the replication, and that will that will help you to okay. When I click here, this shows mm -hmm. up, and when I click here, this shows up. Another one is. The other one is, this is used for Angular ES, so this is more okay. specific for Angular ES um, testings, which is called Tractor. That's pretty much uh, um, a little bit of how I do the tests. Um, the t this kind of tests are called end-to-end -end or um, interface interface testings because in the browser, of course, JavaScript, one of the, the biggest pains of all JavaScript developers or in a specific front-end developers is that we have all these different browsers that behave differently, yes. right? So we have Internet Explorer, we have Chrome, we have Safari, we Safari. have Firefox, we have... Yeah, and all those things behave differently, right? You can tell in, in JavaScript, you can tell Safari, hey, do this, right? And then in Chrome, it's like, nah, I'm not feeling like doing this. And then Internet Explorer doesn't get the message at all, right? So um, it's a good question because it, um, these kind of programs allow you to, it's like, okay, let me see how these specific programs um, behave in different, in different uh, browsers. And then can, at the same time, you want to automate, right? Because you, don't, you cannot be opening every every browser like really really quickly like you, what you want to do is uh, make sure that you press a button you describe how your application needs to behave and then you see just magic happens um, browser stack uh, is good or not so I will try to keep my opinions on third-party tools as close as possible especially on closed ones sure. uh, but yeah I, I have actually used browser stack and I think um, there's many benefits of that um, in terms of using browser stack, uh, but sadly, for in my case, I uh, we myself, I don't feel really comfortable with the tool. Not because it's bad. I think it allows you to do really good st things for for really small application. I think it's a great tool. But mm -hmm. what I have found is when you try to run, uh, hello, <laughs> when you try to run multiple uh, multiple screenshot tests. In really heavy application, they have a lot of interactions that have a lot of um, uh, that have a lot of screens that need to be seen. It's a little bit complicated. It gets a little bit slow. Not all the time loads um, loads uh, the screens um, properly, but it's still it's still pretty good. I mean, don't get me wrong. The other alternative is buying. It's getting all these virtual machines for all the other browsers because Internet Explorer, I mean, you can get it running on your computer, but you need to make sure that it's running properly in Internet in Windows, or you need to get all these other mobile devices, which is crazy. I mean, we're talking about investing thousands of dollars to just get, you know, like a few decent, a few decent um, testing devices. So pretty much uh, I will still recommend a cloud server, a cloud tool such as Browser Stack. There's also mm -hmm. Sauces Labs that allow you to, to test without having you the infrastructure of testing. So, what else? How's your experience with AngularJS? My experience with AngularJS, so, oh, let me just type really quickly what Andrea is Sauce Labs, and I'm just going to type really quickly what I, yes. So, here we go. Sauce Labs. I think that's pronounced correctly. Otherwise, one well, it sounds really bad. <laughs> okay, so my experience with Angular ES is um, I actually love it. I'm one of the strong defenders of Angular ES. Um, no worries, Drew. Um, I think uh, personally, what I what I on my years of, of coding, um, what I have found is that one of the hardest things is to tie your entire application together, right? Like, I, I think mm -hmm. there's a really hard, it's really hard to make sure that your application, you can check everything on your, on your application at the same time. And that is really hard because a web application has a multiple, I mean, big web applications have multiple comp components. It's crazy to test. It's crazy to structure everything, and everything talks on the same language, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I really like AngularJS because it's exactly that. It tells you, you know what, I'm going to take care of everything. DOM manipulation, which is just the browser layout, I'm going to take care of it. 
Um, testing, I have uh, already a lot of uh, applications uh, that allow you to do testing. API calls, which is just connect uh, the browser with a server-side uh, um, a server side uh, project or a server side uh, logic, I got everything right. So I find that in AngularJS really, really useful. In contrast, I think one of the things that maybe uh, make AngularJS a little bit um, weaker is that um, it has a really steep curve. Um, I work with really smart developers here in Switzerland. I am happily to say that I work with the smartest people that I ever met. And they still have a trouble, or they still struggle to get started with AngularJS because it's kind of a heavy. It has a lot of logic that you need to wrap yourself around to, right? But I think, on my personal opinion, is that if you are able to go through this um, to this kind of step learning curve of if you want to go through the the pain, so to speak, of AngularJS has, you can do so many things and. Also, I, I'm also um, going to push a little bit forward that I also think there's a really high demand of AngularJS developers and AngularJS jobs out there. But be, be aware that AngularJS requires a really deep, in deep uh, knowledge of JavaScript because otherwise you, you, might be using, you might be using the tool, but you don't know really well what's underneath it, right? So at the end of the day, it's just a tool. Sure. Oh yeah, um, I also wrote, I wrote a, a post about um, AngularJS, so you can also see a little bit there about the points that I make in there, or why I think AngularJS is is actually a great a great algorithm. Um, lately, it has had a lot of um, criticism, so to speak, and in this case, the 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 main issue is that, um, as I said, it's complicated. But the main issue is that AngularJS has uh, has um, started as as a Local small project that then migrated with uh, within Google, or I think Ivan was already working for for Google when he started AngularJS, and then it took a lot of speed, and then it became super popular, and now they are going to make a really heavy migration to a version that has no backward compatibility, which means that any application that was written in in AngularJS uh, 1.x or any one point version of AngularJS will need to migrate entirely to, to Angular ES uh, 2.0 because otherwise, you know, future future features won't be able to be implemented. And this is, um, from a development perspective, this is, um, I mean, this has its ups and downs, right? I mean, migrating anything, migrating anything from your current code base is really expensive. And for business or, I mean, most of the time, you need to have a really reasoning um, in terms of business. What do you want to? Why do you want to to invest this amount of resources to migrate these technologies, right? And migrating is always uh, always a challenging task and always a consuming task. Uh, but at the same time, that enel enables developers that created the, this tool in the first place to look at look at what they did in the past and be like, okay, we made a lot of mistakes or we made a lot of things. Now let's do it better, right? Uh, there's a, a really famous phrase that uh, one of my coworkers uses a lot, which is, um, "the developer of, of developer of today is better than developer of yesterday," which means that you will always strive to look better. So whatever whatever code that you come up today is probably going to be better than yesterday because you have the learnings of yesterday, and that's going to happen in one year if you continue working and you continue developing your code. You're going to look yourself in one year ahead, and you will be like, "Oh my God, I had no idea what I was doing here," and I think there's a lot of value of 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 a team of developers such as Angular yes, developers that decided, okay, guys, we we have realized that we want to ha have this this a bunch of features that are really interesting, and that we want to migrate actively to that that part. And that, of course, scares some people because they might think that you know their applications that they are doing with the original Angular JS will get not supported. But um, to be honest, Google has over 2,000 applications in AngularJS 1.x. So I address a little bit of that on the comments on a Reddit page that was uh, linking to, to that original tutorial. So if you if you want to learn more about like um, AngularJS, um, a little bit deeper on my opinion in that regard, um, please feel free to, to click on the link that uh, CodeMentor has just posted in there. And also there's, there's an interesting attack 
on on Reddit for Angular JS, which they also discuss a little bit about those topics, which is the best way to be to be informed and to be honest. So, further questions? How to make a web page responsive by CSS framework or fluid layout or media query? Okay, so responsiveness is, um, I mean, just for everybody, for, for we're on the same page, responsiveness is this uh, ability to adapt a content on multiple screens. That's the core of what responsiveness means, right? It means that, not only means mobile device, mobile, it not only means like a tablet, it means that if your web page is browsed in a 4K television, it should be able to look good. And by content, I'm not only talking about the text itself, but I'm the overall concept that the design of your web page or your web application has, right? So, with that being said, um, responsiveness comes from a fluid layout. That's that's uh, that's correct, which means like adapting the the content expands. Um, media queries are the tool that help you achieve that. Media queries are the the commands in CSS that tell you, hey, in this screen, behave like this. In this is in this in this resolution behave like this, so they are at the end of they are the two, and CSS frameworks are have already a predefined media queries that help you achieve that in the most common or popular browsers and devices. So for instance, we have Bootstrap, which is probably one of the most common media um, web page responsive frameworks. Bootstrap helps you to um, to develop your web page. With all these these frameworks in mind, um, there's other things such as um, I think the server. What was the name of the one from serve? Foundation. Foundation from serve, which actually they are located in San Francisco. That also another CSS framework. This is also one that is called Pure CSS. And all those those frameworks you can. I'm, I'm just gonna type in so you guys know some links. So boots. Computer. Um, so I'm just gonna type this one here. And then we also have um, Serve Foundation. I love how all of these they are like the most advanced. I mean, all of them are equally as good, and they have their pros and cons. And then finally, pure CSS. There you go. So those those are the ones that I will I will say address most of the the the, the concepts of of media responsiveness. What's that hmm. Hmm. Aha, any experience with material design? Okay, so we're going very, very up to date uh, questions. That's that's pretty great. Okay, so material design, just a little bit of background for everybody, uh, is this ideology of design that came a little bit from, from Google, which which describes um, the behavior of, of or the, it's not only the behavior, but the the, the, user, the overall user experience that is expected in a design um, in terms that is, is visualized by objects, right? Um, for many designers, I have talked to many designers about this, and it's really interesting because a lot of them are like, "This is brilliant, right?" And a lot of on the other side is like, "Yeah, that that that's kind of been around for for some time, right?" So it's it's my myself. I haven't implemented a design jet or a web application that has um, heavy material design practices, but what I have heard is what they pretty much uh, what it pretty much describes is this is this. Um, Practices and concepts of how a web application or how a, an application should behave in terms of, of of objects within a space, right? So I might be completely wrong <laughs> because until I don't I don't um, have a proper experience on an application might be a, a, an issue. But of course, um, myself I don't consider myself versed in material design. There's a really good talk actually. I can get that for you. There's a talk from Google where they describe exactly everything about material design. Just hold on a second. There you go. Here it is. 
So I actually have even the link in the perfect time where they describe the, the material design, the visual design imagery. So you have to come up with more questions. <laughs> Here's a question. Front end versus back end versus full stack. Ooh, okay. How would you recommend beginners to learn? Should they try to focus on one or should they try the entire stack first? Ah, that's a really good question. Okay. So I, I myself, um, when I started coding, I started being a backend engineer completely. And I think, to be honest, that's, that's, the, best, the, the, that's, the, way, that's the best way to, to start learning, to start coding, to take a really small piece of, of logic within the, the whole world of development and, and focus on that and become really good on that. And by the whole realm of, of, of programming or, 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 you know, development, um, there's so many things, you know, like you can you can be a system administrator and a really good system administrator by just knowing how to do bash, bash programming, right? You can be an amazing front-end engineer by, by using front, front, front-end development. You can be incredible back-end engineer if you do Python, Ruby, Java, uh, everything, right? But I think the, 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 the best way to start learning something is grabbing something really specific and becoming good on that specific area. After you feel comfortable with that area, I will say that you can start expanding a little bit of, of, your, of your realm of knowledge. So for instance, in my case, I started, uh, of course, with C++. I did C++ and Java for <coughs> maybe two or three years at the beginning. And then I, I, I started finding web pages, and I, I found it so interesting. And then I love it, and then I became completely focused on JavaScript. And after maybe four, three years, I started to looking at, at what it's known as the full stack, which is just the whole back end, front end, system administration, operation, and everything. And, and that's when I realized, for instance, that I love system administration, that I love automatization, operations, DevOps, all these, these practices. But by then, I had a really solid framework of experience on a specific language that helped me say, hey, this is, this is easy, this is not, this is complex, this is, this is really, really intimidated, or this is this is something you feel comfortable with. So for by now, because I have a, a really deep in expertise in some specific area, uh, which is JavaScript, I know that, for instance, if I move to another area or to another programming language, um, I know what things make me feel really comfortable. One thing I'm like, ah, this, this is it's a strong concept that I know that I'm weak in because on my expertise, I never really made it through. Do you prefer mean stack for beginners? Mm. Mm. Actually, that's a good question. I will even go for a yes, because to be honest, I started with LAMP, <laughs> which was the, the mean stack of the PHP cool kids back in the back in 2000. Um, and it really helped me a lot because it, it helped me to, to have a full of understanding what makes a web page. And mean, the mean stack helps you a lot because it, as, as it means, which is the Mongo, the Express, the Angular, yes, uh, base. It it helps you really quick, really quick uh, boot of an application, and that's something amazing. I mean, one of my favorite things of programming is that it feels like magic. I'm coding in this Notepad, so to speak. I press a button, and then suddenly there's there's a web page that I can show to my friends and everybody, and it's it's magically. It's it's something amazing, but of, in order to do that, you need to have a base of requirements for 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 that to understand. I re I will recommend the main stack, yes, uh, and for that, of course, I will really recommend a, a strong knowledge of on JavaScript first of all, um, server configuration, like understanding a little bit how what what's the HTTP protocol, how the the, the internet DNS um, works, uh, and also a little bit of data modeling. Although MongoDB is, doesn't necessarily enforce um, Relationship databases and it's it's a document a, a document oriented model database. 
uh, it's still important to try to learn a little bit to, to database to see how how that 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 information is being stored and and you know coming a little bit back to the to the to the other question in terms of back end and front end and you know like a lot of people forget that there's people that are completely rented in just data database administration or the, the DBAs and we have a few in the company that I work at um the, there's it's a completely really specific realm of knowledge in, in computer science and it's it's fascinating I, I can tell you so I think it 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 adds a great value to also explore that that area too but summing it up yes. I will prefer men's deck for beginners. I think it's friendly and I think it's in JavaScript, which is a great language. <laughs> SBG and Canvas. Ooh. So I'm actually a really fan of SBG. Not because it's better or, or you know, it's, it has m many benefits in Canvas. I mean, I think there was this article uh, a few years ago where they compared the rendering of SVG in real time compared with Canvas mapping Google Maps or something like that. I mean, unless you're doing a really heavy application and really specific, neither of them are going to be the difference between a really performance application. Like, that, that is not going to be the difference between... Uh, having a great application or not. However, I prefer SVG because it's a, it's a markup language at the end of the day. It works exactly like HTML and it helps to visualize um, your objects within a, a, a map or within, within a, a document within, within a, an artboard, so to speak. And Canvas, although it has the same, the same, the same approach, so to speak, it's more related to two-dimensional mapping or, or a bitmap that it's been painted. And also, Canvas has a lot of manipulation, which most of the manipulation comes with JavaScript, while SVG most of the manipulation comes um, both in, in JavaScript and CSS too. And I actually used to have, I don't remember if it's still online, a repository. I used to have a repository with uh, that compares such animations, compares SVG animations and Canvas animations, for instance. One of my eh, most famous, so to speak, um, projects on the internet is is an SVG animation that actually uses purely CSS. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna find it up. And well, um, for instance, I know that in order to develop this 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 um, animation in Canva it might be a little bit harder. <sighs> Come on, GitHub. Just need to do the two application. Hold on a second. Please bear with me. Okay, so here we go. Let's place this. Okay, so the link I pasted is one of the my most popular, so to speak, um, projects in the internet, and it's just a simple SVG animation that, if you see, has no JavaScript in included, and it was one of the most high performance animations <laughs> that I ever made, and it was not in purpose at all. Like that, that, that design and that file actually <laughs> was not. I, I'm not a designer. I didn't draw it. I, I actually used it. In, from a, with a, with permission of a, a license and a distributor, but but it's great. It, it's pure SVG. It renders on my phone, renders and everything. While I had friends and I had projects that that have done things in Canvas that they have to be really really careful with the memory allocation, with the JavaScript knowledge, with object garbage collector and everything to make something as performant. And sometimes, I mean, unless you're doing something really really heavy animated, like we're talking about like games, we're talking about like map exploring or things like that. Um, you don't necessarily need that much interaction. If you are planning on doing something that really behaves or, or changes a lot with user interaction, by all means, we go with Canvas. Adobe released, I think, maybe um, a few months ago, actually, this library called Snap SVG, which I find amazing, that allows you to do, like, SVG animations um, with 
JavaScript in a really clear way. Before that, I will say that uh, the, the de facto library for SVG manipulation was Rafael Yes by Dimitri. Yeah, but I think he now is working for Adobe, so I think he redid Rafael Yes in this library that is called Snap SVG, which I really recommend you to to give it a try if you're interested in SVG animations. To do, to be, I mean, canvas animations, I never did it into because I always saw that in some cases they were lacking performance and had a higher uh, entry barrier for development. Let's see, let me just close all this. SQL or no SQL databases. Oh wow, we're going to full range here. So I'm actually a really hardcore fan of SQL databases because it allows you to map um, to map the relationships. I mean, it comes it comes from from name, the names come from the relationship databases, right? While no SQL allow you to just map objects, and you can. I mean, there there. I mean. There's just so many database systems right now that it's just impossible to be like other than uh, than just um, you know SQL or NoSQL. But in in general, um, in general, I prefer SQL because force it forces you to think about the relationship of objects. NoSQL databases are just they can be like buckets where you store and and store things, and then you can you can relation them later on or or never or you know. It's it's easier, so to speak, in, in my own personal opinion, to make mistakes um, from data data mapping perspective, not necessarily performance or anything. That's a whole debate that I cannot even go into. But uh, in terms of mapping or data modeling, I think that SQL forces you a little bit to think really well. What are how the data connects with each other? Well, no, SQL databases are really practical too. But I think that they are a little bit more prone. On, they are friendlier, and therefore. They are um, and they are more prompt to mistakes, and I'm actually going to um, go to uh, <laughs> uh, go with a with a code mentor too. Is like, does anyone any have any other questions? I cash by all means, don't don't feel bad. You've been the, the, the only one asking questions. I cash. You have brought really good questions, uh, but I wonder I wonder if there's anyone that is feeling feeling that they want to ask um, any specific questions. And you can ask anything. I mean, honestly, uh, don't worry in terms of, of, of skill knowledge, in terms of expertise, in terms of um, jobs, in terms of travel experience, in terms of what those programming means, philosophical questions. Like, I'm really open to any, any kind of questions. We'll still have some deal of time. So you have any questions in any area that you feel free, that you are interested in asking or you are wondering that are related to coding, that are related to programming, Feel free to ask. Doesn't have to be any technical area at all. This conversation was sponsored by Coca Cola. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Further questions, people? I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm just um, going to add a, a, a specific closing note in terms of one thing that I wanted to talk about, um, which are just the benefits of coding, which um, I just really advise. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, no worries, you. Um, I'm not aware of, of exactly the, 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 the level of expertise of everybody, but I. I can say that coding for me is one of the most incredible things that has happened in, in my life. It sounds like completely overstated, but it's amazing. And I'm one of the reasons why I'm really happy to, to be here or to just, you know, have this office hour session with co is because I think um, sadly there's not enough people that have uh, knowledge or deep knowledge in, in technical expertise. Uh, in terms of coding, but coding and programming and technology is going to shape the world here and in 20 years and the earlier people get into coding and the earlier people became more expert in all these areas I think um, we will be able to develop incredible things together that will probably help us shape uh, a better world so to speak and I have this really crazy crazy idea that coding helps uh, helps everybody to 
to develop solutions and ideas for, for creating a better world, which is at the end of the day, you know, I think nobody wants to, ah, oh, maybe the world, it's a worse place with my work. Questions, questions, guys, do you have any more questions? Do you have any last questions for Jose? Um, Akash, do you have any final questions? I think now after after you put the comment now you're just, you're, <laughs> you're just making me feel shy about it. <laughs> How to contact me after this hangout? Okay, cool. So um, I actually have a Twitter, which is the best way to contact me. I'm happy to hear that, Drew. Um, I'm really happy that uh, I, I was able to share something uh, in the world. I, I honestly think, I mean, coding and in any levels is, is just amazing. So it's just, it's just a way of thinking, a way of shaping your life that, I mean, um, helps you. Um, Akash, uh, that's my Twitter. That's the best way to just send me a tweet. I usually see it. Happily, I don't have that many followers, so it won't get lost in the stream of of thousands, now I'm usually asked within like a day or two, so don't worry, you can send me messages and everything. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty much. Yeah, maybe a final note on, on my regards, like although I'm, a, I'm an engineer and I, although I have my, my, my education is a computerly and, and Bachelor of Science and I have all these years of knowledge, don't think that I'm I'm super. A lot of the, the time that I, I get when I when a lot of the questions when when I get when I'm um um you know when I do these kind of Q questions with high school you high school uh, students with teachers everything a lot of people are like oh my god you 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 must be amazing and I'm like uh, not at all like I don't consider myself uh, this superhero uh, programmer that you know it's over there in the core and it's solving the world like I'm I'm actually no. I think they have a lot of things to learn, but just the small knowledge that I have in, in programming and just all this knowledge in science has opened me so many doors. Like I'm currently living in Switzerland, which is a great country. I have been studying in Canada. I have lived in Germany, and I'm originally from Mexico, which is is is. Uh, I mean, of course, it's, it's a country where we have a lot of of things uh, to develop still. So programming has opened me the doors, literally, to to the world. Like I know that tomorrow I can grab my computer. Um, start coding and do achieve this full, always this dream of just just um, living, traveling around the world with a laptop. That's one of, the, and you cannot say that about any a lot of other jobs. I think that's one of one of the really things why I'm really happy to encourage people to learn and get better at coding because there's a lot of jobs around and we need a lot of people to do coding. That's anything else. Um. More than happy to leave the mic to iTunes. All right. So thank you so much, Jose. Really appreciate the great insight and the uh, experiences sharing. So thank you so much. You are very welcome. Um, everybody, that's that's my Twitter. Please feel free to send me a message. To send me, you can uh, you can do it through Twitter. Uh, Google. I do, don't use Google Plus that much, but if you find me around there and you send me a message. I won't block you. Anything. I'll I'll answer you in any way possible. And. Everybody, and starting out and pick it up a lot of point in a good direction. That's great. That's great, Jess. I'm I'm really happy that I was able to to have any questions. You have any further questions? There is no silly questions. There is no questions for like upper level, max level. No. Send me a tweet. Uh, tell me, hey, what do you think about these? What do you think about anything? And I'll be more than happy to answer anything that comes into my inbox. Yep. All right. So awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Jose. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. I'm off now. Thank you, Rachel. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Bye.